name is Sarah, and this is Moose. We're both animal care professionals that work primarily with the heavy horses here. Today we'll be talking about ice and calm, their care, we're going to talk about their foods, their grooming, and some enrichment that we provide them. So today we have ice. He is an 11-year-old Percheron, um, and he is 18 and a half pounds tall. So a horse's height is measured in hands, and their measurement is taken right to their withers. The withers is the part of their body where their neck connects to their body, and it's the highest stationary point on a horse. Horses are grazing animals, so often their heads are found down on the ground eating grass and hay. You can see Tom is a little bit shorter. Um, he's about 17 hands, and a hand is a standardized measurement that's four inches. So ice is just about, just over um, six feet tall at his feathers. These horses are Percherons, which is a breed of heavy horse. But what are heavy horses? Heavy horse is a group of, of horse breeds that are bred to be very large and strong, willing to work. And on average, they weigh about 2,000 pounds. That's um, almost as much as a small car. There's many breeds within that category. A lot of people are familiar with Clydesdales, Percheron Peter, Belgians, Shires, etc. And they do all sorts of work for people. The Percheron originated in France and they were initially used as war horses. So if you can imagine a large person wearing armor, riding an armor covered horse into battle, or pulling heavy artillery, that's what the Percheron initially did. Historically, they would not have been as tall as you see today. They would have been smaller, but over time, humans have selectively bred them to be as large as ice, and heavy horses can be even larger, if you can imagine. Uh, so let's look at their food. Ice here is not shod, so that means he does not have horseshoes on. This is his regular, his hoof here. His hooves are made out of very similar material to our fingernails. So if you look at your fingernail and you're looking at the white part that's growing out, that's what you're seeing on the outside of his hoof here. Um, when you look at Tom, Tom does have shoes on. This is Tom. Hello, Tom. Uh, so if you look down here, you can see that he's wearing shoes. You can see the metal rims and the nails that come through his hoof here. So a lot of times people ask me, is that uncomfortable for a horse to have the nails going through his hoof? And it's not. Just like when we file down or trim our fingernails, it doesn't hurt us. We know that it's happening, but there's no nerve endings. There's no blood. There's, there's, it's all just dead material that's growing out. Um, and that's the part that the nails are going through on his hoof. And over time, the hoof grows out. So we have a horse uh, foot specialist called a farrier that comes in and trims their hooves and makes sure that their feet are healthy um, and that there's no problems going on. So every six to eight weeks is when our farrier comes and he will remove the shoe and trim the hoof so that it's proper and balanced and then put the shoes back on. I'll let you get a, a look there <laughs> and I'll point out the nails again. So the nails are coming up here and you can see the shoe on the bottom here. I have an example of a hoop clipping. A hoop clipping. So this is a piece that was taken off of a hoof. And you can see the holes in it, and that's where uh, the nails go through. So they grow out, and then it's just trimmed, trimmed off. We have a few questions that we can start answering here. Um, how much weight can a Percheron heavy horse pull? Great question. So when they're like bodybuilders of the horse world, when they are conditioned to pull their, their physical capacity, they can pull about two times their body weight. So being around 2,000 pounds, one horse in peak physical condition could pull about 4,000 pounds on their own. A team of two could pull about 8,000 pounds. But of course, that also varies with what they're pulling. Are they dragging something heavy on a high friction surface or are they pulling a wagon 
with easy moving wheels on a hard surface. Great. Um, a few people asking, how fast could a Percheron run? So these horses are not built for speed like other horses, like the Arabian or Thoroughbred or Quarter Horse. Um, their top speed is probably around 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers an hour um, for a short time period. Um, they are slow moving, slower moving, powerful animals. Of course, they can gallop. We see them moving fast around the paddocks, but. Um, they're built for going slow and steady and have really big muscles for moving heavy objects. Someone was asking in the comments, where are Percherons go in the winter? How are they adapted to um, survive and thrive here in a Winnipeg winter? Awesome. So horses can live outside year round. As you're watching Tom, he's being groomed. Um, in the winter, horses grow very thick, dense coats. Um, that keep them warm during the winter. So they can live outside year round as long as they have a wind break. Um, and then now that it's spring, they're shedding it out. So just like if you have a dog or cat at home, you'll see that they're probably shedding right now too. Um, and so they're well adapted to living here year round and they can live outside. <laughs> Great. Uh, someone's asking here, what type of enrichment would a Percheron heavy horse get? Awesome. Well, I have a few Um, how old are all of the horses that we have here? And can you tell us who, what other horses we have, what their names are? Sure. Um, so we'll start with Ice. Ice is 11 years old. He's a Percheron. Tom, also a Percheron, is 14 and soon to turn 15. We have Flame, who is who just turned 14. We have Victor, who is our one and only Clydesdale, and he is five years old. There's Bob, who is 13. He's a Percheron. And Rival and Scotty. Both Percherons. Rival is 10 years old and Scotty is 6. Okay, don't take this one the wrong way, but we have a question here asking, do they like you? <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question. So a lot of the behaviors that we see um, let us know what they're thinking of us. <laughs> um, you can tell a lot by the horse's ears, um, about their body posture, Um, do Percheron heavy horses have any natural predators in the wild? So Percherons are a domesticated animal. They live in human care. So you're, you're not going to find a wild Percheron. There are other um, equines that are living in the wild. Um, the Rez are the Przewalski horses. But Percherons are in human care, and so there's not really a predator situation. If they are in a field, of course, there's predators like Someone's asking here, have any of the horses ever stepped on your foot? Anyone's foot? <laughs> what would happen? <laughs>
Great. Um, we have a bunch of questions about what they eat. So what do they eat? What's a favorite treat of theirs? How much do they eat during the day? Can you talk us through their diet? Our horses eat majority of hay. Hay is dried grass, um, timothy, brome, a very small amount of alfalfa. And they eat between 30 and 40 pounds of hay per day per horse. So if you're familiar with the rectangular bale, that's 10 places. Um, they get free choice salt and mineral blocks, and depending on the individual, they also get horse pellets, which offer more calories and a little bit of, of nutrition there. But hay is their main diet, and of course water. They drink as much water as they want. Great. And what would be a treat for a horse? So they love apple and carrot. I think apple is the preference of most, but carrot is a close second, and Bob and Tom love carrot. <laughs> Great. Um, can you talk a little bit, I'm, I'm curious about their um, hooves. Why would um, one horse have a horseshoe and one not? Uh, what is the purpose of having a horseshoe? Sure. So, as we were talking about before, Ice does not have shoes. He's not shod. Um, and that's because he's retired from pulling the wagon. So he gets to spend his days at our center in various paddocks, hanging out, and not pulling um, the wagon. Whereas Tom, he still does that job for us. Um, and so he's walking on a lot more concrete and gravel, which is a hard surface that would wear down his hooves or crack um, his hooves faster than they grow. So the shoe protects his foot from the surfaces that he's walking on and um, offers a little bit more protection. Great. And can you tell us about what's happening right in front of us here? What are we doing for the grooming? And uh, why do we groom our horses? Great. So Mike is working on Tom's mane right now. Um, it can get tangled and full of straw, de or depending on what they've rolled in that day. So Mike is working out all the knots. Um, they're shedding as well. So we're just cleaning Tom up and... Uh, that's his name he's working on and before he was working on his body. So you can see Tom is quite content. Um, his ears are, are up, he's curious, he's standing very nice. I think it probably feels pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, a few people are asking what kinds of colors Percherons are. I know we have a lot of light colored Percherons here. Yeah, we happen to have all dapple gray Percherons at our center, but the majority of Percherons are black in color. Um, our horses would have been born a dark color, a dark black color, but as they grow up, they fade, and that's because there's the dapple gray coloring. The black horse, the black Percherons would have been darkly colored their whole life. Great. A couple questions about age. Um, what is a Percheron's lifespan, and at what age does a Percheron retire from uh, pulling the wagon? You had mentioned that uh, we have some retirees here with us. and still working no problem and that is often it's based on if they're showing discomfort if something's bothering them if they have an injury um, or if behaviorally they're not interested in doing the job so it's all very much individual great um how does this horse sleep does he sleep standing up lying down that's a great question so horses are able to sleep standing up they can lock their joints so that they don't fall over and that's really important because if they were, um, they are a prey species, even though they are domesticated, uh, it takes a lot of effort to get up and down. So uh, the amount of time spent getting up and down, uh, a predator could come and attack them. But they can, they sleep standing up, they'll catch naps that way. They still have to lie down in order to get uh, the REM sleep, a good restful sleep. Um, so you'll see them lying down in their stalls. Another question about the grooming. Do we ever cut or trim their hair at all, or does it sort of maintain its own length? Um, so it will maintain it, uh, its own length. It will grow out. We try to keep it um, nice and trim. We don't cut their hair unless it's <laughs> super ragged or has, has just become impossible to, to clean. We try to let it grow out as much as possible because when there's bugs around, they use their hair, their mane and tail, to get rid of the bugs on their body. So you'll see horses flick their tails or shaking their mane uh, to get the bugs off of them. Great. 
Um, oh, a few questions about, do people ever ride Percheron horses? And do we ride Percheron horses here? Great. Um, I think we're going to start wrapping up. Is there anything else that you want to talk about in relation to our heavy horses? Anything else you want to show us before we wrap up? Great. Um, well, when we reopen, uh, wagon rides are happening Wednesday until 3 on weekends. So I hope to see you soon for that. Um, I can talk a little bit about their eyes and ears. We were talking about their ears and the behaviors that you can um, understand depending on where their ears are placed. But I find it really interesting that horses' eyes are on the sides of their head. Uh, so they see a bit differently than we do. As humans, we see with both eyes um, at the same time, and we have to turn our heads to see to the side. Horses don't have to do that. When Tom is looking forward with both eyes, he can see in front here. If I go right below his nose, he can't really see my hand anymore. But he can smell me and he has whiskers that allow him to feel where I am. Then when you go to the side, his left eye sees where I am and he can see all the way back to his hip. And the same thing on the other side. Good boy. So it's really important when you're working with horses and moving them around um, that when you're introducing them to a new space, you make sure both eyes see everything. So if we were to make you stationary and he's seeing you for the first time, we would walk past you this way and his eye on this side would see you and he might be okay with that. But when I turned him around and his other eye came back this way and saw you, he's seeing you for the first time with that other eye and he might go, whoa, who's there? I'm just seeing you with that eye. So it takes a horse a little bit to become comfortable in environment. Um, making sure you, they see everything with both eyes. And also their ears. Um, you can see where he's paying attention by where their ears are. So right now his ears turn back because he's listening to my voice. Um, and if you were, I was standing in front of him, maybe both ears would turn forward. And right now, because they move independently, he's paying attention all around. He's a bit curious right now. He's listening to something that's happening behind him right now. And so he doesn't have to necessarily be looking at you um, in order to see what you're doing. It's, either, it's really important for humans to pay attention where their ears are pointed um, and that's where they're focusing on. And so when I'm driving the wagon and we're working as a team, I can understand what he's concerned with or paying attention to by just looking at his ears. Great. I have two more unfair questions for you. Okay. Do you, either of you have a favorite horse and do any of the horses have a favorite animal caregiver? Um, all of the horses are so unique. They have such different personalities that it, it is really hard to choose. Um, I have Ice and Tom here doing the talk because of a tra the training history I have with Tom. We have a pretty good relationship that we've built with that. And Ice is just so calm and gentle. Um, he's just a really great horse to interact with that way. But all of the horses are amazing to work with. Great. Uh, I guess my favorite is Scotty. He's up in the front paddock right now. And uh, he's just got a lot of personality. I think he's a lot of fun. Great. And do they, um, do they have a favorite keeper? Anybody that they gravitate towards? Um, I think all of us build trust accounts with the animals. And so... It, it is such a hard question. Um, I think anybody who has food is their favorite at the time. <laughs> Great. Great. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, saying hi to Tom and Ice, and I hope to see you soon.